can we please talk about the next book that is coming out from Sarah J Mass, a Court of Thorns and Roses series. I am so excited. <laughs> she's doing is it's not a full book but it's not a tiny short story she says something like it's half of like a book is I'll get up what she said in a second but she did like a thing yesterday where she asked you to guess what it was going to be called I got it wrong obviously but she now revealed but she has revealed what it's going to be called and it's going to be called a Court of Frost and Starlight, and it's coming out in May 2018, and I've pre-ordered it, so I'm so excited. What she said is a little bit about A Court of Frost and Starlight. This tale bridges the first three books and the upcoming spin-off novels. It's a bit longer than a novel, but not a full-length book, and I had a total blast while writing it. I'm so excited. I actually began writing it while I was working on A Court of Winds and Ruin. Just as a fun project. It takes place several months after the events of ACOWAR during the Winter Celeste and both Feyre and Reese narrate it. <gasps> oh, is it just going to be like the other ones? Along with a few others. Oh, and there's more. So this book is released in May 2018 and I seriously can't wait for you guys to read it. I can't wait to read it either. So here's a brief hypnosis. So Feyre and Reese and their close-knit circle of friends are still busy rebuilding the Night Court and the vastly changed world beyond. But Winter Celeste is finally near with it and a hard-earned reprieve. Yet even the festive atmosphere can't keep the shadows of the past looming. As Feyre navigates her first Winter Celeste at, as High Lady, she finds that those dearest to her have more wounds than she anticipated. Scars that will have a far-fetched impact on the future of their court. I'm so, 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 so excited. So I wanted to give a quick recap of the last three books, just in case you guys need a little bit of a recap. I know that I don't, but at the same time I do, because if it's coming out in May, I'm going to have to read the series before it comes out, so I can remember every single last detail. I recently bought the books on paperback, um, I did previously have it on my Kindle, but I thought, because I'm pre-ordering the book as a paperback, I need my collection to be paperback. So... Here we go, here is the three books. So a quick recap of the books. So these are the covers. They are so, so nice and I seriously cannot wait for the next one. So because it's still gonna be narrated by Feyre and Reese, I believe, this is what I believe, that um, it will still have Feyre at the front of the book, seen as all the other ones have her as well. I can't imagine it have anything different because it's still gonna be about them. Um, I know that she wants to do, I think it was another three books that was going to have different characters narrating it. So um, I believe that they'll be perhaps on the cover or it'll be something different. However, she may put something like the Night Court. Um, so yes, so. Feyre is a huntress. She thinks nothing of slaughtering a wolf to capture its prey. But like all mortals, she fears what lingers mercilessly behind the for beyond the forest. And she will learn that taking the life of a magical creature comes at a high price. Imprisoned in an enchanted court in her enemy's kingdom, Feyre is free to roam but forbidden to escape. Her captor's body bears the scars of fighting and his face is always masked. But his piercing stare draws her even closer. As Feyre's feeling for Tamlin begin to burn through every warning she's been told about his kind, an ancient wicked shadow grows. I'm so excited to read it again. I mean, I've already read it once, but wow. Feyre must find a way to break the spell or lose her heart forever. This book was really, really good. A lot of people have said that it's a little bit like Beauty and the Beast, but they don't understand why. But it is. Um, with Beauty and the Beast, she's basically taken into someone's castle, this beast's castle, um, to take the place of her father. Throughout her time in the castle, um, she basically starts to fall in love with the beast, and then she breaks his spell. So this book is very much like that, um, in the sense where Feyre goes to, well, it's not really a castle, but she goes to his home, his court, his spring court, and while she's there she basically starts to fall in love with this guy called Tamlin. But um, he tries to protect her because there is a threat coming to, well, his court, and um, while she's there she starts to save his life. And uh, she starts to realise that actually all the Fae are actually not as bad as people make out that they are. 
so that's the first one that's a little bit of a recap for that and um i really really love this cover i think this is my favorite cover probably because it's the first book and um, whenever it's the first book yeah it's so much better in paperback like i love it on my kindle and if i didn't buy it on my kindle i wouldn't have loved this series and i wouldn't know about what's going on now and i wouldn't be a great book blogger would i um but yeah this one is um so much nicer in paperback so if you haven't bought it in paperback please do because it's so good so the next one is a court of mist and fury so this is the second one so favorite is immortal Ooh. after rescuing her, after rescuing her lover tamlin from a wicked fairy queen she returns to the spring court possessing the power of the high fae but fairy cannot forget the terrible deeds she performed saving tamlin's people nor the bargain she made with rysand high lord of the feared knight court as Feyre is drawn even deeper into Rysen's dark web of politics and passion, war is looming and an evil far greater than any queen threatens to destroy everything Feyre has fought for. She must confront her past, embrace her gifts and decide her fate. She must surrender her heart to heal a world torn in two. Oh my god, it's so good. This is so, so good. I'm actually like loving each one more than the first now. So this one again is about her and Tamlin, except there's a new character called Rysen. So we do meet Rysand in the first book, um, and as we know from the blurb, she makes a deal with him. Now, she doesn't just make a deal by going up to him saying, hey, let's make a deal. She makes a deal basically to save her life in a way so that she can then save Tamlin's life. Because with the last queen, with the queen that they basically defeat, she makes her do some tasks, and um, to complete the task, she can save Tamlin. So if she dies halfway through the tasks... She's not going to save Tamlin. So that is A Court of Mist and Fury. And the last one. Well, not the last one, because there's another one in May. But the last one that I have here with me is A Court of Wings and Ruin. Um, this one is by far the biggest one out of them all. And to me, I did like it a lot. It's... I really, really like the first one. I really like the second one. But I think because this was the last one, I loved it the most. Because it basically talks about all the courts you experience a lot more than just the spring court and the night court so pharaoh will bring vengeance she's left the night court and her high lord and is playing a deadly game of deceit in the spring court tamlin is making deals with the invading king threatening to bring pythium to its knees and pharaoh is determined to uncover his plans but to do so she must wave a web of lies and and one slip may spell doom on not just Feyre, but her world as well. As mighty enemies grapple for power, Feyre must decide who to trust among the dazzling lethal high lords and hunt for allies in unexpected places. While war rages, it is her heart that will face the greatest battle. And it does. It really does. Meet the courts and they basically try to team up together to destroy the big threat that is looming against them and their people. So this is a map of Pythium and I don't know if you can see it properly so let me try it and there we go you can see it okay so I will talk about this side first so this is a place called Highburn and then over here you have at the very top you have the night court underneath you have the day court then the dawn court and then there's a place called under the mountains so in a way it separates the seasons from the well, day, night and dawn. Um, then you have the winter, summer, autumn and spring. And then you have the wall. Now under the wall is where the human mortals live. So that is where Feyre is from. She then crosses the wall, sorry. She then crosses the wall and ends up in the spring court. And then from the spring court she travels all the way up to under the mountains and then up to the night court. So she basically goes from one side to the other. Um, and then over the other side, which you haven't actually heard much about, but I'm sure we will find out about it in the next books, because it wouldn't be on a map if she wasn't going to have it involved into the series. So on the other side you have the Fairy Realms, another wall, but this is where you have more information about some of the previous kings and queens and their relations with the fairies. So yeah, that is my quick little update and recap of the books. I really wanted to do a quick video about this because I'm so excited about the news that she's, well, 
that she's given us because she's now told us the title of the next book so I'm really really excited for that and I hope you guys are excited as well so as soon as the book comes out I will read it and do a review and I need to read these ones before so I have till May to do it I don't know if it's coming out at the beginning of May end of May I'm definitely going to read these books before May and I'm so so excited for it to come out Ooh. okay so see you guys next week bye